This is an Israelite Jewels recording. Chapter 15 The Story of Moses After Returning to Egypt And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Go now and take your wife and her children, and return into Egypt, for the Pharaoh that ordered your death, hath died a long time, and all his officers that were commanded to take your life were buried with him. When you return, however, make sure that you do all the wonders that I have put in your hand in front of Pharaoh, saying to him, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. And it came to pass, that Aaron, my brother, came to meet me in the wilderness, as the Lord had told me. And it came to pass that I, Moses, went and reported unto Aaron all the words of the Lord, and all the signs which he commanded me to do. And I, Moses, and Aaron, we left together with the elders of that place, and when we came into Egypt, all the elders were gathered together in one place, to hear from Aaron's mouth all the words that the Lord spoke to Moses. And behold, I, Moses, did the signs required for God before the eyes of the people who were with us at that day. And the people believed, and heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and seen all their affliction, and together they bowed, and prayed in thanks to God. It was then, when I, Moses, and Aaron, we first entered in the presence of Pharaoh, saying that Jehovah, the God of Israel, asks Pharaoh for the liberation of the Hebrew people to commemorate a festival of worship to their God in the wilderness for the period of three days, and Pharaoh assumed his air of grandeur and arrogance and did not recognize him as God, stating that Jehovah had no authority over the gods of Egypt, nor any power before the son of Ra, to effect an act of deliverance from the Hebrews or any other ethnic group that was under Pharaoh's care. Then it came to pass, that from the first sign, which Aaron made before Pharaoh, when I, Moses, said, Take up a staff and cast it to the ground, and the staff became a great snake. But Pharaoh called Janus, who was the chief priest of the wise men and the sorcerers, and Jombers, who was the master of the magical priests of Egypt, and they did the same thing with their magic from the occult knowledge coming from the order Mahan, which had been restored with the ascension of Egypt by the hand of Satan. Each of them threw his own staff on the ground, and they also turned into great snakes, and even though Aaron's staff had swallowed up the snake of the high priests, yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened, for he saw nothing mighty that Jehovah the Hebrew God could do that his own magicians would not do double. Then the Lord spoke to me again and said, Pharaoh's heart is insensible to the facts, for how much he keeps an air of superiority to me, the Lord. Behold, therefore, I, the Lord, will overthrow all his arrogance and will not destroy him until he knows that there is no God but me, and that no one can equal me in all the earth. And for this reason I will leave Pharaoh to exist, to show him my power, and that my name, Jehovah, may be known in all the nations that are under the sun because of Egypt. Therefore, Pharaoh will still refuse to let my people go. In turn, for how much the magician priests continue to deceive their hearts with priestly deeds of the Mahan order, I, the Lord, will multiply my signs in the land of Egypt. So go again in the presence of Pharaoh in the morning, when he is going forth to go to the Nile, and you should touch the waters of the river with your rod, that it may become blood before the sight of Pharaoh, and though their wizards do the same, they will soon see that the power of the God of the Hebrews is overwhelmingly superior, for I am hurting not only the waters of Pharaoh's bath, but the wealth of Egypt, which depends exclusively on the Nile. Then the Egyptians will ask Pharaoh, Where is Hopi, the god of the waters of the Nile? He fled before Jehovah, or did he never exist, as Moses has taught among the Egyptians? Later, when the third plague occurred, even the magician priests were obliged to admit that the finger of the Hebrew god was afflicting Egypt, and were so severely afflicted by the plague of boils that they could not appear before Pharaoh to oppose Moses during this plague. Then came the frogs to ruin them, the locusts that devoured their crops, the hail and rain of stone and lightning that devastated their flocks, and the armies of angels, to bring calamity, slaying all the firstborn of Egypt, including the son of Pharaoh. From the fourth blow upon Egypt, Jehovah specifically separated Goshen to remain unscathed, setting aside the land where his people lived. 
after the time of the plagues, and the deliverance of the people of Israel by mighty hand, as recorded in the annals I wrote, the time has come when the Lord requires me, Moses, to structure his church so that the Lord would have a people with his name, by which he might call a special property among the children of men. But because of being a complaining people, the Lord did not authorize me to call any of them under the priesthood of Melchizedek, for they were not worthy to be part of this holy order, except the twelve whom I appointed to sin, and the rulers of a thousand, of one hundred, fifty ten, but they have not been able to maintain this act of craft because of their integrity, save Joshua.